When we look at EM radiation, we can, we're going to actually look at it a little bit more in general now. So as we mentioned before, EM radiation, electromagnetic radiation, is nothing more than crossed radiating electric and magnetic fields, and they oscillate in time. So again, nice little diagram uh, showing that the electric field uh, going up and down, the magnetic field corresponding to that, and we can see that the propagation follows uh, a certain direction. It follows the cross product of the electric field into the magnetic field. And because they're oscillating waves, we can use some of the stuff that we've seen in uh, previous physics classes, or stuff we know about oscillations, and we have some related quantities. So we've seen before the electric field going up and down, the amplitude of the electric field, we've seen that the cross magnetic field, but we'll also get a thing called a wavelength, and the wavelength is nothing more than the distance um, between the uh, one peak to the next. We we'll also um, can relate the frequency of oscillation. The frequency tells us how fast we oscillate. Do we oscillate really quickly? Do we have a very slow oscillation in time? So because they oscillate, we can look at what the actual fields are doing, and we'll see that the fields start off with some peak value that it oscillates between, and there's a sine function, and then it's related to this value of k dot r, where r is our displacement. So if we take a snapshot in time and look at a photon, a packet of light, we'll see that the distance, if we move our distance r, it'll be related to this value of k, this wave vector. We'll talk about a little bit more about that in just a second. We'll also see that the, uh, the oscillation is based off of time, and there's a time component, and we'll get this minus omega, this angular frequency. And last but not least, we're going to put a phase shift in just to correct uh, any coordinate system that we have. And we'll notice that the B field shares exactly the same form, but we'll have a, a, a B naught instead of um, instead of an electric field. So related to that, photons carry energy with them, and it's related to their frequency. So it means different color photons, different frequency photons, uh, will have different energies. And the general form that we'll see is that the energy for a photon is given by couple different versions of it. Uh, the h times nu, where nu is the frequency, or h bar times the angular frequency, so we saw down here, um, is two ways to relate this. A uh, more common way that we'll see it, just because of nature of what the frequency is, we'll see that h o uh, c over lambda. Lambda, this term here, is the wavelength of it. So it's easier for us, we normally talk about wavelengths, um, wavelength of photons. It's much more common than talking about the frequency of, photo of a photon, even though frequency is probably the better thing to use. As we said, we mentioned this value of h, or h bar. Well, h is nothing more than, or h bar is nothing more than h over 2 pi. And omega, again, is 2 pi nu, or where nu is equal to the frequency. Just more common to call the frequency nu when we talk about uh, photons. And h is known as Planck's constant. Uh, sometimes you hear people refer to h bar as Planck's constant. We tend to use them uh, back and forth, just context will provide our clue. But it's a value of 6.626068 times 10 to the minus 34th meter squared kilograms per second. It's a very well-known uh, quantity. It's a very fundamental quantity in physics. Related to this, uh, photons also carry momentum. And again, momentum is going to be related to the color of the photon. So a uh, very common one to use is the Planck's constant over lambda will give us the photon. And we'll see, actually, we've come back to this wave vector. And this wave vector will actually give us the direction that the photon is traveling in. So if the photon is traveling in this direction, then the photon's momentum will be in the same direction, and the wave vector will be all in the same direction. So h bar times the wave vector will give us the, uh, the momentum of the photon. And this works just like normal uh, momentum. It can be transferred, it can be absorbed, it can be reflected. Um, inelastic, elastic collisions come into play. So when we look at this, we have uh, k is wave vector is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So we can relate the, the equations. And probably the 
thing that we want to quickly go through, uh, but it's important to know because it will come in, uh, into play later. It's just some different ranges of uh, wavelengths compared to some of the stuff you may have seen before. So size of an atom is about one angstrom, and that puts us somewhere in the gamma uh, to x-ray range. And this is, you know, light that'll have one nanometer or one angstrom um, light, or 0.1 nanometers. If we move up, a cell wall uh, falls somewhere around here, um, and a cell wall is about 10 nanometers thick, depending on which ones you look at, and it falls x-ray to UV range, so this is just order of magnitudes. Uh, virus is about 100 nanometers, uh, we're getting into ultraviolet light. Uh, particles filtered by surgical mass is about one um, micron, and you'll notice that we just crossed from ultraviolet into infrared, we're actually in the near uh, IR region for one micron particles. And you'll notice that here, um, visible light, what we call blue light, around 400 nanometers, we go up to red light at 700 nanometers. So you can see it's a very small range of this entire thing. But all of these have the same properties in that they all are an oscillating electric and magnetic field. Keep going down. A cell has 10 microns, so we're definitely in infrared. Um, width of a hair is about 100 microns. Now we're getting into more infrared, and we actually get into what's called thermal IR uh, for various reasons. We'll see later on. Uh, your finger's about 1 centimeter in thickness. We're into microwaves. Uh, your hand's about 10 centimeters uh, across the palm, so still in microwaves approaching radio. You know, a small child's about one meter, so we're into radio waves have about the same wavelength as a child. And a football field is, you know, about 100 meters, so we're getting into very long uh, uh, range stuff. So we're past radio and getting even into longer radio, uh, wavelengths. And you'll notice that AM radios have wavelengths. This is the, well, the frequency that we get from, uh, from radio stations. Um, as in the uh, the order of these really long, you know, hundreds of meters range. Did you stop?